Our first caller is Christine from Colorado. Hey, Christine, how can we help you? Hi, I am. Um, first, I want to say I love you guys. Um, love listening to you. Um, but my question was, I recently had surgery and I'm um, going through max aesthetic right now. I'm in phase two and I can't do a lot of the chest and ab exercises. So I was just wondering, is that something I would just skip over? Should I add additional exercises to the other body parts or should I just try a new program period? Um, yeah. So that was just my question. Yeah, no, that's actually a good question. Cause I, I, I get similar questions all the time. Well, people will say things uh, like, uh, you know, I, I hurt my knee or my right arm is injured. Should I train the rest of my body? Um, so this is actually quite interesting because studies actually show that training the rest of the body prevents uh, a, a certain degree of atrophy in the areas that aren't being trained. So in other words, to put it in layman's terms, if I don't train my right arm because my right arm is injured, but I continue to work out my left arm, believe it or not, my right arm will actually lose less strength and muscle while it's healing. So continue to train the rest of your body so long as it's appropriate and of course, avoid training the areas that you can't uh, currently train. However, when you're released to be able to train those areas again, start very, very slowly, and you should recover uh, quite quickly. Muscle memory is a real thing, so when you get back into the workout, you'll notice that the strength gains and the muscle gains will come on real quick initially, kind of get you back to where you were before. How long did the doctor say you're uh, you're out for on chest and abs? So I'm clear. I can do them if I want to. I just, it's, um, it's not comfortable if that makes sense. Sometimes it just feels weird. So I just don't want to push it and mess something up. I mean, you can probably guess what kind of surgery I had. I just don't want to mess anything up. I'm, I'm starting so, to piece it together right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I just, I'm good. I just, he said, whenever I, I feel like I can, yeah, I yeah. can. So yeah, no, no. Okay. So, um, I, I'm, I'm assuming you don't have to confirm this. I'm assuming you have uh, augmentation that was done. Uh, and I've trained a lot of women who've had this type of procedure and they all say the same thing. They all say what you say when they go back to working out the, it just doesn't feel right or it feels tight or it feels like something bad is going to happen when they train yeah. their chest. And that's because, uh, just through the, for the audience, it, with the, the most common way to do this is they'll place an implant under the muscle. It's now changed the, the angle of pull a little bit. And so it's not going to feel like it did before. Now, my recommendation is to continue to train it within your, as long as you're released to do so, within your, your comfort zone. And slowly over time, you'll find that you'll get back to your training. What you don't want to do is leave it alone completely forever. You'll get a lot of atrophy. You'll cause some dysfunction in the body. You may actually cause dysfunction in the shoulders as a result of this. So I would say stay within your comfort zone. Train very light. Start very easy. Move through full ranges of motion. Allow your body to dictate how hard you can go as it, as it continues to to, as it continues to become more comfortable. Yeah, the first step is really to reconnect. And, and so to make sure like you, you take that very gradually. So you, you spend time in, in certain ranges of motion and really try to, to, to regain that sort of tension, that, that response and contraction from your muscles. Uh, so uh, honestly, to, to do really slow reps or to pause or to do isometric type of, uh, you, type of exercises, I think would be very valuable for you to start and just really gradually go through that. Then maybe progress to rubber bands or something a little bit less damaging uh, and make your way back real slowly. I'd be more concerned about uh, abs and core than I would be chest personally. Um, clients that I've trained that have done breast implants, I've always ended up focusing more on rowing anyways, because they, they typically tend to round their shoulder. I think everybody rounds their shoulders forward as it is. And then when you get surgery in there, it just kind of pulls and tightens everything forward even more. Uh, mm -hmm. So most of the energy and focus for training a, a client in your situation uh, would be centered around rowing. So you asked mm -hmm. earlier in the question you asked about you know, potentially replacing some of those chest exercises. Yeah, I would add another row in there, right? So I'd do like a cable row or another dumbbell row, whatever, whatever's not in that program. I'd add, uh, uh, you know, or suspension trainer row, add another row in there to help support that. Uh, that would be my main focus. And then I'd probably do more like core stability stuff instead of something directly like strength training core. Like I wouldn't put you through like a 
like a heavy loaded, you know, sit up or anything like that, or, or a decline or a hanging, something like that, that's going to be a little strenuous on the abs right now. I would probably do more stability and core, uh, get you to activate that and kind of, like Justin said, get reconnected uh, to those muscles. So that would be kind of my focus. And the, the chest stuff that, you know, Sal and Justin are kind of alluding to, I'd probably start to slowly progress to that and lightweight, easy, more focused on range of motion uh, down the road when you feel more comfortable. But I, I don't think it's going to hurt you to lay off of it for a little while. Yeah, the, the, uh, that's a good point, Adam. Uh, I've actually worked with uh, probably five women who had frozen shoulder as a result mm -hmm. of uh, you know, a procedure like this because they didn't move, they were afraid to move, didn't feel good. And then they actually lost their, their shoulder function, uh, got so bad that they got what's called frozen shoulder. Um, so strengthen the mid back when you do your rows, like Adam said, focus on pulling the shoulder blades back and down. Okay. That's going to be real important. And then again, you got to, you still have to get the chest eventually to work through a full range of motion. Cause you could have the strongest back in the world, but if your chest is, the, is so tight because you don't move it and you don't work it. Um, that it pulls your shoulders forward, you you still are at risk for shoulder problems. Okay, awesome. All right, awesome. Thanks for calling. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's um in my experience when I've worked with clients uh, who've done this, the clients who trained consistently beforehand, mm -hmm. usually once they're cleared, it takes us about six months before they feel really good. Women who didn't train beforehand. It could take as long right. as a year. So I just, and this is important to know if you're thinking about doing this, there is a bit of a recovery process mm -hmm. that goes beyond the just healing aspect. I've noticed that with any procedure. I mean, really, if you're going into to have any kind of uh, surgery or any kind of, uh, you know, invasive, uh, you know, type of medical procedure, I think that, you know, really train the body, making sure that, uh, you know, you're nice and strong for that rebound effect. It makes a massive difference. So I've, I've had a little more success than something as long as six months. Um, and I've actually trained north of 20 plus clients in this uh in this situation, right? Um, what I have found is that there's a huge individual variance here. Uh, I've had clients that were literally um, back to weight training like two weeks later. And then I've had other ones that three months, we couldn't even do stuff. So really it's about how well their body recovers. And you would think that it would have a lot to do with you know how much they trained before and then how fast they recovered, but it really just has to do with how fast that person recovers, period. Uh, I think that it, it's... The person who does train beforehand tends to have more of an advantage, but I've even seen that. I've seen some of my fittest clients took a really long time for them to recover and get back, and then somebody who I didn't think was that fit bounced right back. So there is a, a huge individual variance here, and so you definitely have to listen to your body, take it slow. I don't think be, because so many people suffer from upper cross syndrome where their, their shoulders are rolled, rolled forward, I'm less focused and worried about – uh, training the chest, like I would, you know, give her ample time to feel recovered and really, really good. Most of my energy and focus is going to go on rowing and pulling those shoulders back and down. I do think there is, you know, quite a bit of urgency to establish like movement again in yep. terms of range of motion and yep. all that in order for the recovery process to actually, you know, occur. But yeah, it's it has to be very, very uh, much within the, the the range. The intensity has to be very much. Appropriate. Well, you're going to get a lot of that too with with back and rowing exercises. You so, are, but yeah. you know, what, what Justin's saying is like, your body will literally heal in a new way, in a new shape, a sure. new, in, in new movement. And when I said six months, I mean six months to get back to where they were before. Uh, we're training as soon as they're clear. As soon as they're clear, I'm handing them five pound dumbbells um, and we're just working through range of motion. We're just getting them comfortable with that range of motion. In about six months, they're pressing heavy. They're working out and feel nothing at all. And that's average, right? That's average. Some people a little faster, some people a little slower. But uh, yeah, if you're fit beforehand, typically any surgery, you, you just tend to heal. You have more You have more muscle to lose. You're not going to be in such a bad position because you're not moving. Yeah, I think of our 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 mobility drill that we do in Prime Pro, which is the, you know, when she can, right? I, at this point, I don't know where, I didn't remember where she said she was at in the recovery process. Um, but I love like handcuffs with rotation or Justin's wall circles. Mm -hmm. uh, you do that and she's going to be in a, a really good position. So to me, I'm, I'm focusing more on that than I'm worried about a chest press or a chest fly right now. You, you keeping good shoulder mobility and the ability to retract That's and depress key. is going to be the biggest key, I think.